I'm probably one of the craziest type one diabetics you will ever meet if we ever do meet. And a lot of people, especially my clients ask me all the time, like, how do you do all this stuff and not get burnt out? Like, <laughs> how do you consistently get over 90% every day for years on end and not go crazy? And I think this is a great question. So today I want to dive into how I don't burn out, but also what keeps me motivated. What's the, the reason I'm able to continue pushing through and build on new challenges like this triathlon sprint I'm competing in next week of oh, five days now. Wow, that's getting real. Uh, but if you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I'm a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist. I live with type 1 diabetes. And today I want to talk to you about how I can push forward uh, with type 1 diabetes, encounter new challenges and obstacles, and not only avoid burnout, but to thrive in the face of adversity. So today we're going to dive into that, a little more motivational, but also a couple tactics and strategies that I think you'll find helpful if you also live with type 1 diabetes. So we'll get into our theme song and jump into a story about how I almost gave up on this entire triathlon thing to begin with. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. So I'm not going to lie to you guys, the triathlon sprint has been a massive challenge. <laughs> and it's something that I've struggled with every single step of the way. And I think a lot of people see that, you know, I'm consistently making progress. I've shared that I'm breaking my own personal records at least one to two times every week. It's been super fun, but also literally every single workout that I do there are friction points that I have to overcome. Like there's there's pieces of my day or my blood sugars or just my energy levels or being a new parent and not sleeping, things that get in my way. And I'm just like, I don't really wanna work out today, right? And I had to push past those. And I know a lot of people get hung up on this. I don't feel motivated. I ran out of my willpower. And the first thing that I wanted to address is those friction points, these decision opportunities for us to turn down doing the work that we want to achieve our goals, right? Now, as diabetics, and I've heard this statistic thrown around the internet, we, and this is an average, but we average, I think it was 180 extra decisions that we have to make every single day with our diabetes when compared to an average non-diabetic person, right? Now, everyone else has their own crap to deal with too. So I'm sure they make extra decisions as well. But for type 1 diabetes specifically, the research has shown the average is that there's about 180 extra decisions per day. So when we have 180 extra decisions, that also means there's 180 extra opportunities for us to give up to say no, to say, you know what, I'm done, not today. So when you think about how many times you have to say yes to your diabetes, it makes sense why a lot of people burn out, right? Where there's a lot of opportunity for us to say, I just don't wanna deal with this high blood sugar or man, another low, are you kidding me? I finally got the courage up to, to go work out or the motivation to go for my run and now I'm going low, I'm done. Right. So with all these opportunities, it's important to recognize what we call decision fatigue. The more decisions you have to make, the more friction points there are on the way to your goal, the less likely we are to actually achieve that goal. Now, I'm going to share a clip of actually uh, a little video that I made in the car coming back from one of my triathlon workouts the other day. Uh, now, I actually record these for myself, so this is not with the intent of publishing to the internet, uh, so please keep that in mind. <laughs> it's not the best quality, but these are actually how I make notes to myself on what I want to share with you guys. And so, uh, real quick, I'm going to share with you a few of the friction points that I ran into a couple days ago when I was doing a full run-through of the entire triathlon sprint on location to make sure I could get my practice in. So, I'm going to play that real quick, and uh, <laughs> we'll jump in and analyze what I was saying in a second. For example, this triathlon, I need, I need to complete these trainings in order to prepare myself well enough to show up as a type one uh, for my sponsors, for my audience, for my friends and family, for my daughter who's going to be there watching. It is a necessity. As such, I will push through just about anything 
in order to complete my trainings. And today is a great example of that. So is the last time I trained. So is almost every time I go training. There is so much friction, but I push through. And I ask myself, why do I push through? It's because the desire to complete the task to accomplish the goal is great enough. For example, today, woke up, uh, let's see, last night I went to bed super late. On top of that, I woke up like four times thinking it was time to get up because I was so stressed about missing my alarm since it was way, way earlier than I ever typically get up. Uh, I did get up. When I did wake up, my pump had delivered a unit of fresh insulin to get my blood sugars in check, but they really weren't that bad. I was in the 130s. So a fresh unit of insulin on board, like, do I really want to do this? I have to go out swim by myself in like 45 minutes. So there was that, um, you know, just being tired, getting to the, uh, the ocean, bay, whatever, and my sensors were acting up, like kind of failing, but kind of not, not giving me great readings. It was super cold. Uh, it started to rain at one point. My knee started to hurt. Like every step of the way, even to the point at the end where it was like, I've done good enough. Maybe I should just call it so I don't hurt myself before next week. But because that desire to complete the task, to accomplish the goal is so strong, I pushed through. I reminded myself why I'm here and Inevitably, I finished and I actually broke my personal record. And that is what we're striving for. So how do we get to that place? All right, we're back. So that was a lot of friction points, right? I mean, fresh insulin on board, did not sleep the night prior, uh, woke up multiple times. Uh, it rained in the middle of our bike ride. It was my dad and I, actually. My dad joined me, and both of us were like, dude, there's water dripping from my helmet. This is ridiculous. Uh, you know, my knee started to hurt. For those of you who've been following along, I've got some knee injuries. Uh, what I didn't mention was the night before, I had actually bashed my knee on a door frame, <laughs> so my quote-unquote bad knee was already bad heading into the race, right? And then, of course, at the very end, this complacency crap that sets in, I'm halfway through my run after already completing the bike and the swim. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should just call it. Uh, I've already done enough of the workout. I understand the course. I feel good about it. And I'm starting to make excuses as to why I should just quit early. Like, what is that? And of course, thankfully, uh, the other side of my brain kicked in and was like, stop whining, keep running, right? And I finished the lab, I went for the second lap and I actually completed the whole thing. And then as you saw, I got a PR, a new personal record for the full course. So it felt great afterwards, but in the midst of it, I wanted to quit multiple times. And there were a lot of friction points where I had opportunities to say, oof, man, my knee hurts. I should probably play it safe because, you know, the race day is next week. Or, oof, an insulin injection or insulin bolus from my pump. I have a whole unit on board and I'm supposed to go swim out in the middle of nowhere by myself. Is this really a smart idea, right? And all these different things that could have been seen as viable excuses to not go out and complete this workout today. But I will tell you the one thing that has helped me more than any other is the desire to accomplish the goal. When it boils down to it, like I really thought to myself, like, why, why did I push through all that friction? Why did I continue saying yes? Why is my willpower so strong? It's the why. Like, why is it there? No, it's the why. Like, why is it important to me? The desire underneath the surface, like the deep emotional desire. Why is this important? And I can tell you for me, it boils down to a few different things. One, I made this event very public. I did that on purpose. <laughs> if I quit, everyone's going to know. I don't want to be seen as a quitter. So I will continue pushing forward so that everyone can see that I do follow through, right? So I, I kind of set this trap for myself. It was like, hey, everyone, I'm doing a triathlon sprint. Oh, shoot. Now I can't quit, right? Like now I have to actually do it because everyone knows. And I've been talking about it every single week. So I'm keeping it fresh in people's minds for my own accountability. I'm creating this. <laughs> it's a, it is like quite literally a trap for myself, uh, where if I back out now, I screw myself over. And that was intentionally done. Second, though, is this desire to overcome this desire to complete something that is difficult. And I actually wrote about this in our recent newsletter, which if you don't get that, by the way, renegadenewsletter.com. I write about all of my experiments with blood sugars, what works, what doesn't, what my clients are using to eat their favorite meals, what I'm using for the triathlon workouts, 
all that fun stuff, how to stay 100% time and range, all that great stuff. Uh, you can go to a newsletter, or sorry, renegadenewsletter.com. It's a blast. We send it out once a month to your doorstep. All that to say, uh, with this desire that I'm looking for, I've also got you know people that I want to inspire. Like my daughter's going to be there. I want to show her that her dad is capable of completing a triathlon sprint. Um, you know, for myself, really just ingraining this idea that I am stronger than my diabetes. Like that's one thing that I have continually challenged myself on because I have gotten to places where diabetes held me back or rather I'm going to rephrase that because I want you guys to understand how this works. I let my diabetes hold me back, right? Limitations are self-imposed. Diabetes isn't actively trying to hold me back. <laughs> it's a disease. We live with it, right? But I had chosen at periods in my life to let diabetes hold me back mentally, physically, all sorts of stuff. So when we look at desire, we want to understand what moves us, what motivates us. But the second part of that is, of course, the desire to accomplish the outcome, but in wanting to accomplish the outcome, we have to make a deal with ourselves in the now and over the next weeks, months, years, whatever it's going to take to reach that goal to suffer through the challenges, right? Because there is no goal worthwhile achieving that is done so in the absence of suffering or in, an ex in the absence of an exchange of some sort of effort, of energy, of finances, right? So I'm looking at this triathlon sprint. I'll be honest with you, on day one, I didn't consider the suffering. <laughs> I was like, triathlon, that sounds cool. What is it? And I just said, yes, I went and registered. It was very impulsive. Uh, but beyond that, when I actually did decide, okay, I need to start my training, I need to take this seriously, my sleep, my diet, my exercise, all this fun stuff, um, I had to really sit down with myself and say, Matt, this is going to be hard. This is going to take a lot of effort, right? And just mentally that that handshake of like, okay, if we're going to do this, we, we're going to do it. You're not just going to, uh, you know, give half effort. You are going to put your soul into this, <laughs> this workout, into this diet plan, into this sleeping schedule, and you're going to give it your best shot. Your best shot is going to be uncomfortable. <clears throat> it's going to be hard. It's going to be uh, a painful experience in some cases. And there have been days where I could not walk without a limp, right? Like my knee really hurts sometimes. Um, my lungs, my blood sugars, like everything is impacted by this. And so I had to make that decision and choice to be okay with it, right? To suffer intentionally for the outcome of the goal. And you think about uh, the goals that are worth achieving require this suffering, this input of ours to accomplish the goal. All worthwhile things do require that. So we have to make that um, first acknowledge that it exists, but also make that deal with ourselves. Like that's what it boils down to. It's that mental handshake of like, okay, Matt, I, I acknowledge this is probably going to suck at some points. I am willing to put up with that suck so that I can accomplish the goal. And you might be thinking, well, Matt, there's, surely there's things that um, that can happen in life in the absence of dealing with suffering and pain and uncomfortableness, right? Like, yeah, what if somebody just gifted you a million dollars? You know, you've got some uh, some uncle in uh, what's the place that always gets scams? <laughs> like Zimbabwe, Nigeria. There you go. Uh, sorry if anybody's from Nigeria. This is just what we see in the U.S. You know, your Nigerian prince uncle reaches out and goes, "I have a million dollars. Just give me your bank info." And like, it actually turns out to be real. Wow, crazy, right? Well, that million dollars, while it feels like it was a huge win that you just got for no pain, no suffering, has second and third order of consequences. <clears throat> now, I want you to listen in real close for this one. This is going to take some some thinking. So everything we will do or not do has first, second, and third order of consequences. So the first order of consequence for the money is, oh, I'm rich, I'm happy, I love this, right? The second order of consequence, though, is what happens next as a result of the first order of consequence is that maybe I start spending money wildly because I never learned the lessons on how to be financially stable or responsible because I've never had a million dollars before. So I start spending like crazy and developing some unhealthy habits, right? And maybe next as a third order of consequence, I spend through all the money, find myself homeless, addicted to drugs and alcohol and prostitutes, and now I all my family hates me because they watch me, uh, you know, backstab everyone and be selfish. Whoa. So it turns out getting a million dollars wasn't just me winning at life. There were other things that happened, second, third order of consequences. You think about 
uh, if you set a goal for weight loss, right? Weight loss doesn't just happen. I mean, you've got, uh, what do you get? Liposuction, right? But there is still a cost required. There is still suffering. There is still pain. The pain of losing the money that you had to pay for somebody else to fix that problem. The suffering of the recovery, right? There is always a give and a take. There's always a balance, always a deal to be made. So sometimes that deals with ourselves. If you choose to go the weight loss route by yourself, that means you have to be okay with exercising, eating healthy, drinking lots of water, sleeping, right? And the first order of consequence might look more like, oh, this sucks. I hate going to the gym because it's uncomfortable. It's painful and I'm sore. The second order of consequence, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just... I'm run down from all these triathlon workouts. Second order of consequence might look more like I'm starting to see results. I'm feeling better. Uh, I feel stronger. I'm more confident. Third order of consequences. Now my family is seeing that I'm stepping up as a leader because I'm more confident and I'm being given more responsibilities over the family and uh, everybody's getting along better, right? Like there's always the next thing that happens. So when I look at what are my desires to accomplish the goal and am I willing to put in the, the necessary work, the suffering, the pain to get to that goal, that is where it all stems from. What is the desire? And is that desire strong enough to carry me through all the crap, the mud, the sludge of the process to get to that goal, right? So as I'm training for this triathlon sprint, uh, I mean, I told you, I set a, essentially a trap for myself where I was like, hey, everyone that I've ever met and everyone on the internet, I'm doing this thing. So now like, I have to do it, right? But before I did that, I did make that deal with myself that I will do what is necessary to accomplish that result. So what I hope you take away from this one, uh, A, a book recommendation. There's actually a book behind me. I'm going to point at it. There it is right there. It's called Designing the Mind. I actually just bought that book for all of my private clients because it was so powerful. Um, I would look it up. It's it's pretty dense. Um, took me a while to read through it because I really wanted to process everything. But it talks about how to intentionally form habits and well, designing the mind. It's how you design these processes, these desires, these cognitive functions, whether subconscious or not. And uh, that's helped me to understand things like this podcast topic today, where we talk about the desire to accomplish the goal, making a deal with ourselves to endure the suffering necessary to reach the goal. And of course, with diabetes, we've got these things mixed in all over the place. You know, you've got somebody who says, I want 100% time in range. It's like, well, great. That's totally possible, right? Like, I hope you know, first of all, that it is possible. Uh, now, second, you have to make a decision. There's a couple of different ways to accomplish that, right? The first uh, is ultimately live the same day forever. <laughs> if you want to eat the same thing at the same time of day, at the same level of stress, the same amount of sleep, the same type of exercise, diabetes loves consistency. So if you keep everything the same, you'll probably get that 100% at some point or another, especially if you're learning from previous mistakes and adjusting things, right? Uh, the pain and suffering involved with that is through restriction. A lot of people don't want to eat the same thing at the same time every single day, never go out with family or friends, never get to enjoy activities or exercises or create memories because, you know, life is fun to live. It's called quality of life. We want that. We want the balance. But that would be the trade-off. That would be the the deal, right? I will restrict myself completely so I can get 100% time and range. And maybe you do that for a couple weeks just to hit it the first time. So you know it's possible, you feel it, and you're like, wow, that was amazing. Or maybe you just don't eat at all. And you're like, okay, if I don't touch food, I won't spike and I'll stay in range. Cool, do it once, right? It's fun. But if you want the longer term, there's a different type of pain and suffering and deal you have to make, right? Uh, it involves a deep understanding of all of the blood sugar variables of which there are more than 42. The internet, there's this thing floating around. It's like, oh, there's 42 variables. There's a lot more than that. Let me just <laughs> open your mind a little bit because each of those variables, when they interact with each other, creates a new variable. It's complicated. But if you're willing to put that work in and suffer through studying, right, you'll be able to have a deeper understanding, which may yield more control, more predictability, and you'll be able to move your way towards that goal. And ultimately, what I want to also kind of convey here is that any goal is achievable given consistent effort over a long enough time horizon. If you do the, the correct work over a long enough time period, you win. Like that's 
That's it. The issue is that most people with diabetes don't know what the right things to do are. And because of that, they don't really see any progress right off the bat and you get burnt out and you give up and try something new, right? You try different diets, keto, low carb, vegan, paleo, like which one's going to work for me? They all work, but it's just a matter of putting the work in the correct way for a long enough period of time. You know, people think that weight loss is impossible with diabetes. It's not, it's totally doable. It does look a little bit different as people living with type one like us, right? But you need to do the right actions for a long enough period of time and you will achieve that goal. And that's the the game that we can play too, is, you know, do the right things for a long enough period of time so that it becomes unreasonable for you not to accomplish your goals. So then it becomes, what goals do I want to hit? And then back to our first lesson, why do I want to accomplish those goals? And is that desire strong enough to carry me through the pain, the suffering, and the suck in order to accomplish that goal down the road? Okay. Uh, Obviously, if you want shortcuts, that book covers it too. There's ways to shortcut these processes in our brain, but also in real life. It's called hiring an expert, right? Going to people who know how to do the things you're trying to do. So you don't have to put in a lot of work. It's just more focused work over a shorter period of time. And they tell you exactly what to do, right? But these are the processes that I follow. I actually went and found a bunch of other triathletes that live with type one, asked them a bunch of questions. They were amazing. Uh, I went and got a coach, had them help me prepare my plans, my blueprints for what do the workouts look like? What do the meals look like? Um, You know, I got this doohickey right here on my wrist. It's called a whoop band. It gives me tons of data. For those of you who don't know, I love data. I It's literally all I do with blood sugars, (laughs) like with my clients. We are a data-driven formula processing company that helps people to analyze and interpret their blood sugar data and create formulas and equations around them so that we can predict where blood sugars are going to go and ultimately spend less time worrying about blood sugars and more time enjoying life. That's the whole thing. So I found out this gives me all my data on my phone. It gives me my heart rate, my respirations, my sleep cycles, my exercise routines. It tells me everything uh, that allowed me to also get more feedback and expedite my process with my triathlon training. But you have to first have the desire that enables you to push through the suck, the challenges, the obstacles in order to accomplish the goals said differently, do the right actions for a long enough time horizon and you will accomplish your result. But in order to keep doing the right actions for a long enough time period, you have to have that desire burning inside of you in order to accomplish that. The best way you can do that if you don't have it yet, surround yourself by the right people who are going to lift you up and help you to get that motivation rolling, especially when you see their success and can ask them questions. It enables you to borrow that desire from them. It's an incredible thing. They call it the mastermind effect. You can look it up, but the idea is if you're in the right room with the right people who are also pursuing a similar goal, it'll pull you up with them. You just kind of get lifted up like, oh, hey, we're, we're moving. We're, we're making progress. This is awesome. That's why we do our, our whole program in cohorts. I think it's an amazing opportunity for people to work together towards a common goal. Um, but ultimately, I think that you should start with finding your desire, because if you don't know why you're doing something, you're going to hit friction points like I did, you know, a couple of days ago, my knee hurts, I have insulin on board, it's cold, it's raining, and you're going to give up. That's the truth. And I've been there. And there are times when you have to revisit and go, why do I want this? I don't know. Okay, well, maybe it's just not as important to me as I thought it was. And I've had those conversations with people. Why do you want to control blood sugars? Like, why are you going to put 100% effort in on this as we work towards a common goal of building out your 80-20 blood sugar formula? And they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, (laughs) it's going to be hard work. Our programs are intense. That's why they work. But if you're not willing to put the work in and you're going to drop off and give up the first friction point, There's no sense in us working together, right? And it's not that I'm mad at them or they're a bad person. Sometimes you're just not ready. Sometimes your goals that you want, you have to identify that there is no deep desire. And maybe you just don't want the things that you thought you want as badly as you thought you did. So it might be time to either revisit the desire. Why do I want this? Or in some cases, the what? What do I want? And sit down and go, where should I put my focus? Like, where are my desires pointing me and how can I use that for my benefit to accomplish the great goals that I've set up for my life? 
All right, so uh, I hope that helps. I kind of went off on a little bit of a different tangent, but uh, got a lot of fun headed my way in the next week as we enter into the competition with the triathlon. But what I would know, or would love to know in the comments, if you're on YouTube, drop some goals that you have and we've got some trainings that I can, you know, comment back with and send you links. I would love to support you guys in your goals. Uh, so if, especially if they're related to blood sugars, obviously. Uh, comment your goals below, whether it's time and range specifics, an A1C number, a certain type of food that you would love to start enjoying again. Or maybe it is training for something like a triathlon or a soccer game or even just playing pickleball, right? I would love to read those comments below and we'll start pulling comments and putting them on future videos so that we can address those, maybe even answer some questions live. All right. So drop a comment below. Uh, like I said earlier, if you're not part of the Renegade newsletter, that's a great community of people who are like minded and pushing towards more stable, more predictable blood sugars. It's a monthly newsletter. It's physical. We ship it out to you filled with golden nuggets of what I'm experimenting with. My clients are learning tips and tricks, all that great stuff. You can find it at renegadenewsletter.com. So after you leave a comment on the YouTube video, go to that website, tell us where to ship it, and we'll get you out one. All right, so have an awesome rest of your day. I hope this one was helpful for you guys. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you get notified when we put new stuff up. I'll catch you guys next week. Keep up the fight.